Good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, today we're going to do something fun. Uh, today is my birthday, and we're going to make a birthday cake. Um, my family likes to make uh, homemade birthday cakes, so I'm usually the one that makes them, so I'm going to make it today. Um, we're going to make a vanilla strawberry mousse cake. Yum. <laughs> um, it's going to be made with uh, mousse and... Uh, like a strawberry puree with like some fresh strawberries in it and some whipped topping. Um, I don't really like icing that much so since it's my birthday no icing on this cake. <laughs> so I hope you'll join me. Okay so to start we're gonna put one cup of butter. Let's get a knife here. This is for the vanilla cake portion of the cake. We gotta make the the vanilla portion first. A little bit extra. Okay, and then we need one and a half cups of sugar. This is a half cup measure. With baking, you want to make sure that your measurements are precise, nice and level. It matters in baking quite a bit. The whole recipe can go just completely wrong if you don't follow it properly. Um, half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to mix this up. We're just going to cream the butter and the sugar together. That's the oven, it's preheated. Okay, let's add four teaspoons of vanilla. I like to add a tiny bit extra for more flavor. Just add one extra. Then we can add Uh, some baking powder, one tablespoon. I'll level this off. You can use a knife for this as well. I just use a knife, the back of a knife, and make it nice and flat. Okay, let's mix that together. Let me just get a spatula so I can scrape down the sides of the bowl. I like everything to be mixed really, really well, so you gotta scrape it down. Let's add four eggs. This is a super moist vanilla cake. I don't like dry cake. <laughs> if your cake does turn out a little dry, you could add simple syrup to it, or, or maybe even some milk, brush the cake with some milk, and it will make it a little bit more moist. Okay, now let's mix the eggs in. Okay, with cake you don't want to overmix, so just till it's incorporated. And now we have one cup of buttermilk. I didn't have any, I had to make some. If you don't know how to make some, you just take milk or heavy cream and mix uh, about a tablespoon or so of vinegar into it. Let it sit for a couple minutes and you have buttermilk. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add all of the buttermilk. Buttermilk. 
I'm gonna mix that in. Okay. Now, let's see what's left. All that's left is the flour. So I'm going to take my flour because this is a cake. Uh, we're gonna sift it into a separate bowl. Let me just get my sifter. Let's sift the flour. It says two and a half cups. We're sifting the flour so that the mixture is nice and smooth. It's a little bit grainy at the moment, the cake batter, but that's because of the butter. Let me get a knife here one sec. Okay. Making sure it's nice and even. Just gonna pour it right in and sift it to get all the lumps out. See, it makes the flour nice and fine. No lumps at all. It makes the cake a lot smoother. For some baking recipes, it's really not necessary, but for cake, I highly recommend sifting your flour. sec here. Let's see if I got a half cup measure in my drawer here. No, but I have a quarter, so we just need two of these. And then when you get to the end and there's some bump, some lumps, just push them right through the strainer. There we go. Now our flour is sifted and we can put it into the cake. So I just want to take off some of this uh, lumped butter on here. And scrape down the sides a little bit. I am going to whip this mixture just a couple more minutes. It's a little bit lumpy. The flour will take away some of the lumps from the butter. But I just want to take away a little bit more of it. That's a lot better, okay. So now we're gonna start adding the flour into the wet mixture a little bit at a time. So, just add about a cup at a time. Mix it on low. You don't want to overmix. You don't want it to go everywhere. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn it up a little bit higher. Okay. Now let's add some more flour. I'm gonna add the rest. I think I added about half last time. Give it a good mix. All the lumps are coming out, I can see. That's good. From the butter. Okay, now let's scrape and make sure everything is incorporated really well. Okay, 
Now let's mix one more time and that should be good. Okay, that looks really good. The texture's nice, it's not too thick. You don't want cake batter to be too thick, otherwise it's gonna dry, be dry. So let's take this off. Okay, this is supposed to fit into two nine inch round pans but we'll see uh i might put it into one and just cut it into uh layers later let me look to see how well it fills the pan first so let's spray the pans okay i like to do this over the sink because i don't like to get the the spray all over my counters <laughs> So for this recipe, when I, okay, let me explain. When I make cake, um, I don't put parchment paper or flour. I literally just spray my pans and they turn out great every time. Um, if you would like to add parchment paper to the bottom or uh, coat it in flour, that's perfectly okay. I just don't prefer that method. So we're just going to spray. I make sure I spray liberally, make sure it's really nice and covered. We don't want it sticking whatsoever. Okay, now let's put it in the pan. Let's put some of the batter in here. See how much it fills. This is a new cake recipe I'm trying. Um, normally, cake batter is a tiny bit more liquidy than this, but I think it's meant to be like this. So I was reading the recipe. <laughs> I think I'm going to cook this in one and then if even if it puffs up I'm going to cut layers for the cake so one should be fine. So we sprayed the other pan for no reason. Um, if you're wondering why my aluminum pans look like this <laughs> is because I did not realize you couldn't you shouldn't stick them in the dishwasher. <laughs> so if you stick them in the dishwasher this is what they look like. <laughs> It doesn't hurt them, it doesn't affect them, it just changes the color of the pan. Okay, so because I'm putting this all in one pan, it might take a little bit longer to cook. So it should be cooked on 350 for uh, 30 to 35 minutes. I'm going to put it on for 35 and then we'll check it and it might need, it might need probably like five or 10 more minutes. So we'll, We'll check it with a toothpick when it's done and we'll see if it needs more. So I'm going to bake this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. So the buzzer just went off and I checked it and it looks really, really light. And I can see from here that it jiggles in the middle. So I'm not going to put a, I'm not going to put anything in it like a toothpick. We're going to let that bake probably for another 10 or 11 minutes. So I just took it out of the oven. Let's test it. Come out clean. It's clean. It's good. It's nice and cooked. So now I'm just going to put it onto a baking rack and cool it. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and put this on the baking rack. So we're going to take it right out and we're going to try not to break it. <laughs> it should come right out of the pan. <laughs> little hot I didn't want to touch it there we go and now I'm gonna let this cool and while we're letting this cool we're gonna to start to make the strawberry mousse okay so for the mousse let me just get my mixer here and use a hand mixer and then get the heavy cream
Okay. So let's pour some in. I'm going to pour about, about a cup. Actually, yeah, let's do a cup for now because this is just for the mousse. So. And pour a little bit of vanilla into it. out okay now I'm gonna put some powdered sugar in right now we're just making um, the whipped cream portion of this should be good so we'll make the whipped cream and then we will make the strawberry portion to go inside the mousse oh didn't wear my apron again. We want to blend this till it's uh, stiff peaks, okay? <laughs> okay. going to test the peaks here and do a tiny bit more you don't want to overdo it because you'll make butter okay a little bit more okay so when I lift this up it should stay in peaks if it's stiff peaks so like that Yes, this is good. Okay, now we're going to cut up the strawberries for the puree that goes inside this. Okay, get my cutting board here. Just move the whipped cream out of the way. I've already washed these. So we're just going to cut up a few. Just need to get a pot. <coughs> we'll put these right into the pot here because we're going to cook this a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. So I do not have gelatin. Normally I would make the mousse with gelatin, but I was doing some research and I can use cornstarch. So I'm gonna put the cornstarch mixture in this and cook it so it thickens it. And then when we incorporate it into the mousse, it'll help thicken the mousse. But normally you would use gelatin. I just discovered when I went to go grab the gelatin that we don't have any. <laughs> It doesn't have to be big chunks, it, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to mash it a little bit with my potato masher, just so it has a little bit of chunk but a little bit of uh, puree as well. So I'm only doing enough to put into probably uh, maybe half a cup of puree into this. Actually, I think instead of mashing this, we're going to puree it with my immersion blender. And then maybe we'll cut up some fresh strawberries to put inside it after it's pureed. I think that would be nice texture.
I wish I grew these strawberries, but I didn't. <laughs> My strawberries, I just started this year. We actually need to plant some soon here. Um, I have them ready, I just haven't had time to plant them yet. Um, so next year we will have our own strawberries, that'll be great. Okay, so I think this is good. We're going to cut these ones up for the fresh strawberries that we're going to put in the puree after. So we want these to be a little bit smaller because they're going to stay this size. Just to give the cake a nice fresh strawberry element too. This is going to go on one of the layers of the cake. So that's why I'm making sure it's they're cut nice. Okay, I'm just gonna put these aside. We don't need these just yet. And for the strawberry puree, I'm just going to take some of the powdered sugar and add just a tiny, tiny bit to it. We don't need a lot. Just enough to add a little bit of sweetness to the strawberries. I'm going to add a tiny, like very small amount of vanilla, just a little bit of flavor. Like that. And I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Just a tiny pinch. It brings out the flavor of the berries. Okay, now we can cook this down and puree it. Okay, so we'll just mix that up a bit. Now I've got a little bit of water here and I'm going to add some cornstarch. This is going to thicken up the puree mixture. And this has to be melted in cold water. It'll go lumpy if you do it in warm water. So it will dissolve perfectly. We're just getting this ready. Okay, so put that aside. I'm gonna cook the strawberries just a little bit. I'm gonna get my immersion blender ready so that we can blend this in a minute. Okay, I'm just softening the strawberries a little bit before I puree them. They puree better. Oh, the smell of strawberry is so nice. Okay, let's try to puree them a little bit here. That looks nice and pureed. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the cornstarch mixture. Just mix it up again, make sure it's nice and mixed. We're going to do this a little at a time because we don't want this too thick. If it does get too thick, we can add water. You do not want to add the cornstarch directly to the mousse because it will have a powdery taste because of the cornstarch. So you have to put it in the mixture here so it cooks.
See how it's starting to thicken a bit? That's perfect. We want it a tiny bit thicker. Just give it a second to heat up here. Make sure I'm not adding too much. We're going to add a tiny bit more. This is going to be a, f a filling as well, so we don't want it too thin. It'll seep out the side of the cake. A bit more. Cook down the cornstarch flavor. Okay, I think that's probably good because it is going to jellify when it's cool. Okay, I think this is perfect. So now I'm going to um, cool a little bit of it off to put into the mousse. Actually, we're going to cool both of it off um, because we're going to need it to put it into the cake layer as well. I have two bowls here. So I'm going to take a good chunk of this to put into the mousse to flavor the mousse strawberry. And then I'm going to put the other one in this one. And then I'm going to add the fresh strawberries. One sec here. Make it a spoon. I just want to make sure that's enough. I think we're going to switch these. So we're going to just take the fresh strawberries and put them right into it. Just mix it all together and this is going to go on top of the mousse layer in the middle of the cake. Give it a nice fresh strawberry texture. Okay so now we need to let both of these mixtures cool a little bit before we stick them into the whipped cream and create the mousse. So once these are cool enough I will be back and then we can start assembling everything. So this the strawberry puree is cool enough now. So I'm going to give you a little closer look here and show you how we're going to fold this into it. Okay, so we're going to take some of the puree. We're going to just put it right in. I don't want to add too much because we don't want it too liquidy. And we're just going to fold it right into it like this. until it's incorporated. If this doesn't thicken enough for a mousse, that's okay. At least, at the very least, it'll be a strawberry whipped cream, right? But I think this should be okay. Add a little bit more here. You have to do this when this is cooled, otherwise it'll melt the whipped cream. Okay. So mix in the rest here. This gives it a really nice, fresh, strawberry flavored uh, mousse. You could use artificial flavoring, but I, I recommend to use fresh. It's a lot better. Just like that. Okay, let's taste this. See if it's flavored enough. Mm, it's really good. It's nice and light and like a really fresh strawberry flavor. It's perfect. Okay. Now we can start cutting the cake and putting some of this together. Okay, I just got my cake stand out here to get ready. So I'm going to cut the top of this off. 
So we're just going to go like this and go all the way around, make it nice and flat. My grandmother actually taught me a trick um, if you're not good at cutting straight. <laughs> um, you use a piece of uh, string and cut each layer and just go like this and cut each one. It's nice and moist. Lots of aeration holes. It's good. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut this into two layers. Uh, this isn't going to be a huge cake. So if you have a, a cake layer cutter, that's when you would use this. <laughs> if you, like I said, use string. If not, just cut it as even as possible. There's one layer. Got a little uneven, but that's okay. This is just for us, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So we're going to put this right on. Clean up some of my mess here. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to add the mousse mixture. When you're doing this, you want to try and leave about, about an inch to the side because when you put on the top layer it's going to squish and you don't want it to squish all over the place. Okay. Now I'm just going to gently spread it out just a little. I don't want to spread it out too much. I apologize if you hear the lawnmower in the background. My neighbor is mowing his lawn right now. Okay. Now let's take some of the fruit mixture. I'm going to put it right on top. If I was doing a multi-layer cake, I would put this in a totally separate layer. But because we're not, I'm going to put it right on top. Now we can take the second layer, hopefully I don't break it here, I have a habit of breaking it, even if you do break it it's okay, we can piece it back together, yep it's going to break, I can see it, so we're going to piece it together here. There we go, piece this piece, and this piece, there we go. Okay, now we can make some whipped cream to cover the whole thing. So I'm just going to use the same bowl that we were using the whipped cream in previously. We're going to add some. I want enough to pipe a little bit on the top as well. So I'm just going to make quite a bit here. There we go. Add some vanilla. And some powdered sugar. And I'm going to add one other thing. So I'm going to add a whipped cream. So this whipped cream stabilizer helps um, keep the form of the whipped cream because I want to pipe with it. So if you add a whipped cream stabilizer, it helps keep the shape and it won't melt. Just a little trick I learned. Okay, 
Now we just mix it. This isn't quite as stiff peaks as I like, so I'm going to, because I do want to pipe with it, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more powdered sugar. That's better. Okay. So that's good. So I've got my piping bag here. I'm just adding a tip in the end here. And I don't need too, too much of this in the piping bag. It's just for the top of the cake to make it look pretty. So I'm just going to add some of it in here. We want to keep some for the to cover the cake, but if we don't have enough, we'll make more. We might need to make more, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna need to make more. <laughs> Oops. So I'll do that off camera here and then we'll get ready and start putting the cake together. I'll just put all of this in the piping bag. <clears throat> Make sure when you're putting your whipped cream in the piping bag, um, it, even if it's with icing, um, that you get all the air bubbles out. So how I do that, I just lift it up like that, make it nice and tight. There's a big air bubble right here, I can feel it. So just do it until it starts to come out a little bit, like that, and then it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some more and then we will put the cake together. So I put the cake in the fridge just to cool a little bit. It is going to need a lot more cool time. Just to thicken up the, the mousse and solidify all the layers. Well, not solidify, but you know, <laughs> make it so they're not really, really loose. Okay, so we're going to start with the whipped cream. I made a whole bunch more. Switch utensils here. Like I was saying earlier, I'm not a big fan of icing. Um, I will eat cake with icing, I just, it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's really sweet to me, and I like to taste the flavors rather than just taste sugar. <laughs> so, I'm going to, if you see how this cake is a little bit droopy on the sides, I'm going to make the whipped cream a little higher on the ends to try and counteract that. Attempt, we'll see. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch utensils again. I love baking, especially cakes. It's one of my favorites. I bake my children's birthday cakes every year. And just to warn you, there will be a couple of birthday cake videos coming up. Um, in July, I have two birthdays in my family. So I will be making some birthday cakes for them. Show you different ones that I make. See what kind they want. My daughter's birthday is at the end of July, and my fiance's in the middle. Um, my daughter tends to like cake with icing, <laughs> so I will make her an icing cake. Cake with icing on it. We'll see, maybe she'll surprise me and want something different this year, but it's usually always got icing on it. <laughs> 
I usually let my children choose what kind of cake they want me to make. And then I get to choose the design. <laughs> Creative freedom, right? I am just really into uh, light tasting cakes. This will have like a, a strawberry shortcake feel to it because of the whipped cream, which I am totally okay with. My neighbor is still mowing his lawn. <laughs> it is a very nice day out today, so I can see why he wants to mow it. Gonna take a little bit off the top here. I only got a little section left. Okay, now I'll we'll try and make it look a little prettier. I'm just leveling out the top a little bit more. I don't expect this to be perfect. It's a at home bake job, right? So, but I do like to try and make it as nice as I can. Add a little bit more to this end here. Okay. I think that's good. Oh, wait, this one end here is a little low. Try to build this end up just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good. So now I'm going to put some of the stuff on top. Okay. So I already washed and pre-cut these strawberries that I have here. I tried to find ones that were similar size so it goes nicely. So I'm just going to put them on either side here. Like that. I like to do it symmetrically so that they're even. So you're not trying to switch them all around. Oh, I might need two more. Yeah, I'm going to need two more. I'll get two more and I'll be right back. Two more. I'm just going to push this one up just a little bit. I don't want it to fall off the cake. It is still on a tiny bit of a slant here. So one more here and here. Okay, now we're going to take the piping and I am just going to do pretty little swirls in between. You always want to place the strawberries first before you do this part so that it looks nice and even. That looks beautiful. Maybe I'll add a couple more right in here just since I have so much left. Then 
There we go. I think that looks beautiful. I think I'm going to do one more thing though, just because it looks like it needs one more thing here. I'm going to take these other two strawberries I have cleaned here. Just looks like it needs a little bit of extra something. This is the creative artist in me coming out. I was a painter when I was younger. So I'm just going to slice up a few here. So I think I'm just going to fan them a little bit like that. I'll give you a little closer look just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just making it look a little bit more beautiful, that's all. Add a little bit more color to the, to the cake. I could have left it, but I figured this looked a little nicer. Even if it is just for me. <laughs> me and my family to have for dessert. There we go. I think that looks pretty. There we go. And there's the final product. I wanted to show you guys these beautiful flowers that my fiance just bought me for my birthday. Aren't they beautiful? Ornamental lilies. Oh my god, they smell so good. Aren't they beautiful? Aw, that was nice of him. <laughs> So I am just going to chill the cake in the fridge probably for a couple hours, probably two or three hours, and it should be ready right around dinner time. And the inside layers will be more firm and able to cut into it better. But uh, yeah, this is where I'm going to end the video for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed making this beautiful birthday cake with me, and I hope you try the recipe. And I'll see you next time. Bye. So we just dished up the cake, and I just wanted to give you a look on what it looked like on the inside. All of the mousse is nice and set. That's what it looks like. Looks delicious.